Hey guys, welcome to Jazz Tutorials. Um, today we're going to be creating something pretty awesome and elaborate. Um, this will take you a lot of time. Um, again, this video may be a little long as was my previous video, but you all want something awesome, it's got to be long. So, you can't have the best of both worlds. You can't have something short and sweet and to the point and awesome. It just doesn't work that way in Photoshop. Some things take hours, some things take minutes, some things take days. Um, this might be around 10, 10, 15, 20 minutes to make. Uh, I don't really have a timer, but anyway, we're going to get started here. Um, I already have my PSD file already opened, um, and I'm going to show you how I did it step by step. If I did it, like, layer by layer, it would take more time. So to make this a little faster for you to watch, I just did it step by step through each layer that I already have open. Um, each layer is hit. Each layer is hidden so you'll know what we're doing. And I'll explain as best I can, step by step, so you understand. If you don't understand something, comment, and I'll try and help you out uh, best I can. Alright, so you're going to open a photo, um, um, an exciting photo. Um, I chose this one here because it's very um, outbursting and exciting. It makes photos exciting. So um, I opened that on a black canvas, if you didn't already know, but we chose black canvas. Now, my canvas is pretty large because I wanted to showcase this tutorial in a really nice way, in, in high quality way. So here we go. So um, and then um, after I did that, um, I created a gradient layer above that. Um, you can go ahead, and, um, it's not an adjustment layer, it's just a regular layer, um, a new layer, and then we chose the gradient tool over here. And um, I made it um, linear at first, and then I added a mask layer, as you can see over here. And inside the mask layer, I used a, I used this selection here, radial gradient, and I made that so you can see. Now, when I click this to show you, you'll again see how it's a little red. Um, if you have it without the um, if you disable that, you'll notice that it's more all over the place. So you don't want that. You want it to be kind of just behind the uh, person's layer. Um, and I use rainbow, if you didn't already notice, for the color. Um, because it's going to really showcase the effect more nicely and high quality like. So there we go. So that's the uh, next layer above that. Then I went over here um, and to my right, I created these lines. Now, you can do these various ways um, if you know how to do it. Um, for those of you who don't know how to do it, um, it's a very kind of complex way to do it. Um, you do have to use the marquee tool, or you can go ahead and use the rectangular tool um, to create your lines. Now, because I'm a nice person, um, I created a um, PSD file of how I made these lines for you because I figure it would take, save you time and it would save me the stress of trying to help you figure out how to make these in Photoshop. So, as you can see over here, I've made you all this lovely right-sided um, lines. And I'll provide this for you in the description below to download. And then you can use it in your photo. And, um, yeah, every photo will have the same. So just make sure the lines are always to the right. Um, and you can use any photo you want, by the way. Um, as long as it's exciting to you and it will create an awesome effect for you. All right, and also, if you didn't already notice, the lines are too a rainbowish color. <laughs> we have a rainbow theme going here. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay, uh, moving along. Next layer. I added some scan lines. Now, um, you can't really see them because um, they're kind of hidden. It's kind of a brush I found. Um, you don't have to add the scan lines because really you don't really see them really anyway. But um, for my photo, um, I thought it would look cool. Um, it's just a brush you can find online. Just Google um, scan lines brush, you'll find it. I'm not going to provide that for you in the description below because really it's, you know, optional. It's not really something you need. But I added it to this photo because I thought it, enhan it enhanced it quite well. Alright, then moving up to layer 14. Well, it's going to be layer 4 for you guys, but for me it's layer 14 because I moved around all my layers. Um, and layer 14 isn't really important. Um, I just added a little lighting to the photo itself, her. Um, you can't really even see it, because see how you don't even know what's there. So don't bother with that. Um, that was just for me. Sorry, guys. And then I added a little smoky 
brush to the uh, back of her, as you'll see here. Um, I use white, and I turn that to um, overlay on the uh, blend mode, in case you're curious about that. And when you do so with that, you'll, it'll blend in with the background and give it a more awesome smoke effect. Um, I, did, I just found that as a random brush as well on Google.com. So again, Google.com, type in smoke brush, and any smoke brush will do just fine. There's not really a set brush for this tutorial. A lot of the brushes you see in this tutorial, you can, you can always go ahead and use your own. Um, that will also give it your own flair. Because, you know, copying me won't really give it, you know, your originality. So create your own originality and add your own brushes and effects to this as well. I'll provide some of this stuff for you, but most of it I'll let you do at your own creativity level. So, uh, yeah. Alrighty. Next layer. I added another smoke layer, and this one I overlaid as well. And when you do so, it will then brighten it and pop out more and give you more of a smoke look. See what I mean, guys? We're getting forward here. It's getting kind of advanced now. So if you're a beginner, this may not be a suitable video for you, but if you are a beginner and just want to see what's going on, that's cool too. I will not, I'm not to shy away from beginners. I love beginners. I love advanced people as well. I love all kinds of people. So, yeah. All right. Then over here, we have layer, the next layer. And this layer here is kind of a light, um, a lighting um, layer again. And I just did a little light um, in the background, and I changed that to hard light. Um, it's not really even noticeable. I mean, if you do normal, you'll see it, kind of, sort of. Not really. No, not at all. All right, well, even though that was just another one for me um, that I did for this photo. But again, that's an optional layer, if, but you don't have to add that layer of light. If you need to have light in your background, you can, but honestly, it's not really needed but some people may want to add that to give it that extra wow factor. All right, now I added an adjustment layer above that called Hue and Saturation. And this is what I had for my settings. I used Hue for 118 and the rest was at zero. All right, do you kind of catch me there? All right, now I then, now in case you're curious, what's this little arrow thing for? Well, what that does is that turns that layer to go further, to merge into the previous layers. Rather than keeping it on top of all the layers, it merges it to the bottom and creates this awesome, like, uh, it's hard to explain, but do you, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And how does one get that? Well, there's two ways of doing to get that right there. Um, when you click on here, there's a little paint bucket over here. And this is going to clip the mask to the previous layers below. You can click that, or if you're a cool kid, such as I, hold down your Alt key and then click the layer. And that will again give you the option to make an adjustment below. Alright, follow me so far? Alright, are you guys with me or are you confused? Because if you're very confused right now, I'm sorry. And if I'm going too fast for you, Again, I'm very sorry. I'm just trying to get this video going so you're not, like, bored to tears. I try and make things interesting on this channel, so hopefully you guys enjoy this. All right, above that, I added a splattered brush. Now, any splatter brush will do. Um, mostly any brush in this tutorial will do. Um, I turned that into overlay as well because I wanted it to go with the background. So mostly, all, most of the brushes you'll use in this tutorial, you want to set to overlay. But if not, I will tell you so. Um, and make sure they're white or black. Um, if you use white, it'll show better. If you use black, it'll be a little darker. So I'd go with the white if you're doing um, a splatter brush. Um, See, so yeah. So I chose white, as you notice. And then overlaid it, and boom. All right, it looks pretty cool so far. All right, now we've reached my girl now. This is where the fun comes in. Um, we're going to double click this, and I have outer glow settings set on my layer because it'll enhance the background of the photo, and you'll see that in a, qu in a few seconds. The blend mode is color dodge, and the opacity is 100%. Um, this color here is standard, so don't even change that. 
um, but the size is 250px, okay? And the range is at 80%. Usually you'll see the range at 50%, but for me, I chose 80 because that's going to give it more of an awesome outlook. So I'm going to turn that on for me. And bam! Ooh, look layer. Look at that, guys. Now you can see the background starting to come out and shine, right? That's what we like to see. Alrighty, now above the girl layer, I now have a set of levels. And that's just going just gonna to enhance the rest of it and make it look awesome. So you'll see here on my right side here, the settings that I've shown, um, I have 10, 0.97, and 234. The bottom output levels never change because that's going to make it too bright and too crazy, so just leave those alone. All right. And that one there, you do not need to have it as a clipping mask. That one can stay the way it is. Um, all right. Then again, we come back to our hue and saturation. And you want to add this setting here for saturation, which is plus 5. And you're good to go there. No need to clip that mask because you want that above all the layers to show. Okay? All right, that's a lot to take in, I know. But seriously, it's going to be an awesome outcome. I know you guys will enjoy it. All right, then we then I added a brightness and contrast. And I just brightened it a tad, not too much. I didn't want to really overpower it. So I chose 14 for the brightness and 3 for the contrast. And as you can see, it looks amazing so far. And again, no clipping mask needed for that layer because you want that above all of the layers so that it goes with everyone. Alrighty. Now, you'll see I have the word clone set here. And what this is, is this is just a random selection of brushes that I found on Google.com again. Um, they're little tiny squares. Um, and again, just go to Google.com and Google in small square brushes and you'll find something cool. Um, you don't really have to do what I did. Um, you can do whatever you want, or you can even leave it alone. You're going to need to. I just, for this photo alone, it looks pretty awesome, so I left it in there. But you can, not, you can delete that out if you want, if you're set. doesn't really matter. And you can leave that at normal. Don't change the blend mode because, again, in the final, final photo, you'll see why. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost done. I swear to gosh, we're almost there. But we're halfway there. All right, now. I have added a light streak. Now, you can create this using the pen tool if you would like. But because I am not a good person on using the pen tool, I again went to google.com and I found a brush to suit this photo. Um, if you would like me to provide this for the description below, I can. Um, if not, that's alright, I won't. Um, if you do, leave me a comment and let me know so I'll know how many of you really want this and how many of you really don't because my upload space on Mediafire is getting kind of full, so I kind of have to figure out what to upload and what not to. Alrighty. And then I added a second light, um, and this was another light streak. Oh, I love this light streak. Um, this I actually figured out how to make with a pen tool. Um, it took me a couple of hours, I'm not going to lie, because the pen tool is not really my best friend in the world. Um, and I used um, a pink color. And I faded it out using the um, stroke tool, um, which took a while as well. But you can also find a brush um, and use that as well, um, whatever suits your photo. Um, and you don't need to change any blend. And I changed the blend mode here to screen because my pink color that I chose was too uh, dark slash bright. So, yeah. And with the other previous layer, the... Uh, clone layer, I left that at normal because it's already brightened and lightened enough. Alright, and then I found some cool sparkle brushes. Um, I don't know if you guys remember a previous tutorial I did about like almost two years ago, like my first ever tutorial. Um, I think I used a sparkle brush. Um, I used a sparkle brush in one of my tutorials. I can't remember which one right now, but um, I have the download for that sparkle brush in there. So, um, when I find it, I'll provide that link for you in the description, or if you want to be a cool kid, you can also research your own on Google.com. Well, I am really, really, really promoting Google.com, aren't I, guys? So, thank you, Google. I'm promoting you so much today. <laughs> okay, and, um, then, um, I made some bubbles, um, which, um, you see now, sort of, kind of. Um, you won't see them quite yet because we're not finished with the photo, but in the final, final photo, 
um, you'll see them, but they're there. They're just hidden right now. <laughs> um, yeah, the bubbles, um, I just found a random stock photo on Google.com. Again, I need to really stop promoting Google.com, guys, because seriously, I just think I need to stop promoting them. But anyway, they're the best place to get good stuff, so I found stock footage on there and just imported it on here and put it to overlay, and away we went. Yeah. All right, and um, I added a bunch of more of these bubbles because I think that would enhance my photo. Uh, yeah, now you're seeing them, see? And um, oh yeah, and I also add these cool little squares. Um, again, when you download a square, when you download a square brush package, um, maybe you'll get some of these here. And if you do, totally add those. Uh, yeah, because they're awesome. And when you do add those brushes, I will show you a cool trick we're gonna do with them. Double click your uh, cool layer of your squares, if you have any. If you don't, that's alright too. Um, I chose this fabulous pink fuchsia color. Yeah, that one right there. And then we change the opacity to 75%, which might be standard, I'm not sure. And then the blend mode's at color dodge, which is probably not standard, probably screen. But the color dodge is what you want to have for your blend mode on your, on your outer glow. 18px for your size. And your range will be 52%. All right. Then we went, I added a stroke. Um, now, this is where it gets kind of weird because with strokes, usually you just use one color. But me, I used a gradient fill. And I chose these rainbow awesome colors. This rainbow here. This rainbow color here is transparent to rainbow. It comes standard with Photoshop, so you should have it in your swatch there. If you don't, well, you should load it because it's awesome and you need it. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, I chose that. And the angle's at 90% and scale 100%. That's probably standard, too. Um, and then style is linear. And the rest is all, yeah. Oh, and the size is 1px, in case you didn't notice as well. <laughs> And I clicked OK and I got that awesome looking square cool footage. Um, yeah. Oh, and the fill, obviously you can see it's at 0% in case you weren't noticing. But I'm sure you did because you probably wondered why it was so cool and transparent. And on the previous bubble layer, um, I added an inner glow just to enhance the bubbles. But you don't need to if you don't want to. But I did anyway because I'm cool. So this is the thing I use for that. Um... Yeah, alrighty, moving along, we are almost there, I swear to God, but we are halfway there. Alright, um, then on your next layer, I added a pink, um, a pink colored light, um, and I set that to linear dodge because that's going to really enhance the photo as you see. Um, when I hit normal, you'll notice it's really pink-ish pale, so we need to have that at linear dodge because that's going to give it more light. Yep, I like that. Don't you? I think so, too. Alright, um, and for the next couple, five or six layers, you'll be adding light. So just stick with me and listen up because, yeah. And there's really no set color. It's just a shade of what I'm telling you. I mean, you don't have to do exactly the same color, but just the same kind of shade, if, if that makes sense. Alright, on the bottom over here, I added a... Uh, a yellow brush, um, and again, linear dodge is what I chose, um, and that's what's going to be for almost all of these layers because that really promotes this this tutorial quite well. And as you'll see, I put it right there, um, and you can place it wherever you like. Um, I just think that looks pretty um, respectable, I guess you'd say. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on. All right, that's the last of that. Apparently, uh, I thought there was more. Um, I added a thing called Sandblast, which is um, basically the same thing as this. It's just a different shade of coloring, but you don't really need to add that unless you want to. Um, I'll provide that for in the description below. I'm going to be a nice girl and, and give you two things to download because I'm a cool kid. That's what cool kids do. So that will be in the, in the description below because that, again, is very hard to make. Um, it can take you a couple hours maybe, depending on how advanced you are in Photoshop and what you know and what you don't know. So, I'll be a nice kid and provide the food in the description below. Alrighty. And that will be listed as Sandblast, in case you're curious. Alright, I added another bunch of sparkles because I like to sparkle shit. So, we added sparkles um, just around the edge here. Um, and they're small because you don't want to have them too big and make them overpower the exact image. 
So, yeah, I did that. And, um, here we go. Another layer. Um, and basically what layer 18 is, um, well, for me it's 18, but for you it's probably going to be like, I don't know, like 10, 11, 12. Um, it just, it's another, uh, layer of, um, sparkles. And it's a copied layer of sparkles, and it just gives it more of a brightened the sparkles. You can see them more. Um, yeah, that's what that is. In case you're just wondering what the hell it was and you didn't see anything, that's what it is. All right, and another sparkle layer. Um, and this just, in, again, enhances the sparkles so you see them brightly. All right. Wow, we're almost done, guys. Oh, my God, this took forever to make. And you're almost there. You're so close. But yet so far. Uh, <laughs> sorry to disappoint you guys. All right. So here is my dance layer. And why is it called dance? Well, as you see, I wrote the word dance. Now, this was a stock image that I found. It wasn't really something I created personally. So I cannot take credit for the word dance. But it's pretty awesome because I added some effects to it to enhance it. Um, I added a lot of stuff to this word dance. Um, yeah. We added a pattern overlay like this. Uh, where is it? Uh, I think it's that one there, I believe. And that actually comes standard with... Um, I'm standard with your Photoshop. Yeah, I don't know why I blank right there. <laughs> yeah, and I added an overlay for the settings there. And we added a nice stroke of a uh, white with a 1px. And we centered it. And the blend modes overlay. I added a bevel and emboss. And um, these were the settings I chose. Uh, color dodge for both the shadow and the light height. <laughs> highlight highlight mode wow and they're both white colors and opacity 90% for highlight and 20% for the shadow mode and so on and so forth you can read the rest I'm not going to recite it for you because that's just going to take up too much time all right are we good if you're not good you can pause and do your thing all right moving along inner glow these are the settings here that I've chosen I chose white for the color and overlay for the blend mode and opacity is at 45%, and the rest, well, you can see for yourself. And I'll give you a five-second pause so you can create your stuff. Okay, that was five seconds. Here we go. Inner shadow. Uh, multiply and black are the... Are the no. Multiply for the blend mode and black for the color. Opacity is 75%, distance 7px, size 24px, and yeah. All right, drop shadow. Drop shadow is black, multiply. That's probably standard, so is the opacity. Angle 32 degrees, distance three, spread zero, size is 21px, and that's about it. And then when you click OK, you're gonna have that. Now, by stock image on the dance layer, I, I just meant the text itself. Um, I didn't mean the, the whole image was stock. I mean, you could find a cool stock image like that. That'd be awesome. But I just showed you how to create a cool stock like image. So if you want to use um, your own text, you can do that and it'll look awesome. And um, I then recopied it and I put some more down here. Um, but you don't really need to. You don't want to. Um, on the second dance layer, which I used, we used the same settings as before, and I just copied it, but I changed the font. So yeah, that's what that is, if you're, again, curious. And, um, yeah. Wow! We did it, guys! We finished it! And I think it's been well over 20 minutes now. Have I wasted your time? Have I made it worth your while? Have I made you go wow? Well, I hope I have. If not, I'm very sorry. Um... I know a lot of you out there are looking for awesome stuff, and I thought this was really awesome, and, um, I figured you would enjoy something awesome from me for once, because usually my videos are, like, under 10 minutes long, and I try and keep them under 10 minutes. Why? So I don't bore you and make you watch videos that aren't worth your time. But, uh, yeah, this is my video of the week, um, and one more added note, um, I've been away for a few days. Um, usually I post a lot of stuff. I'm on more often. But 
Uh, I've been internetless for a couple of days, and um, I'm not going to brag about that or explain why, because I'm sure you're going to assume why. <laughs> YouTube pays my bills, that is true. I make money on YouTube, in case you didn't already know. I am a full-time YouTube partner, and I enjoy being a full-time YouTube partner, and I enjoy the money that I make on YouTube, and I enjoy you, the subscribers, likers, and video people. So, with that being said, please like, comment, and subscribe. I need all the helps, help I can get. I need all the people I can get. I love making new friends. I love helping people out. I love doing what I do. I love graphic arts. I love all things art. And maybe someday you'll find me in California at VidCon. You never know. I might go to VidCon this year. And if I do go to VidCon this year, I'll make sure to stand out. Alright guys, I'm going to leave you alone because you've watched this video for far too long. And I'm pretty sure you clicked off of it by now. But if you haven't and you stuck around, thank you for sticking around and watching this awesome video. And again, like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you hopefully next week or sometime soon. Alright guys, later!